Hello craft beer lovers, Jeff from Beer Cartel here with a live video from Beer Cartel HQ in our time in Sydney. Um, I'm here with Michael Doherty, a very good customer of ours. Um, best and, customer? <laughs> probably one of our best customers. <laughs> Definitely shared a fair few beers as well uh, at different events, uh, Gabs and Tap House and the like. And I've also got to the right of me, I've got William Wilson, or Willie Wilson, from Camaray Craft. So Camaray Craft is a craft beer venue in uh, the northern suburbs of Sydney. Um, and hosting, you guys do hosted dinners. Um, you've got four, five, six beers on tap. Six beers on tap. Six beers on tap. Constantly changing. That's all right. independent. So right. 100% independent. Uh, they don't do any macro beers there, all craft. Uh, and also a very, very good uh, wine selection. Tasty wine. That's all right. So this is a follow-up video to the last couple of videos I've done. Uh, you, if you tuned in yesterday, you may have seen me talk about the uh, Catalyst TV program that was on the ABC last night, 8 p.m., 8 PM with regards to the world's oldest beer, or possibly the world's oldest beer, where they revived some yeast strains from a ship that was wrecked off the coast of Tasmania about 220 years ago in, 19, in 1797. Uh, so I thought today we were lucky enough to get a few of their bottles. So these are some bottles that you may have seen in the program last night um, that have used the yeast strain that they um, extracted from those bottles. Um, and we, I wanted to do a bit of a tasting now that the media embargo is all um, finished and we can talk about the beers and where they've been sourced from and the actual program. So we'll be tasting it myself. Did you watch the program, Jeff? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, good, good. I did too. Yep. What were your thoughts? I thought it was an interesting story. I really yeah. did. Um, the world's oldest beer coming from Tasmania in Australia. Who'd have thought? But uh, yeah, where did it actually originate? That's really that's, that's a, something we were discussing just before before this. Yeah, the, the most intriguing thing that I found about the show was that the the ship that brought it to Australia actually came from Calcutta. So mm. the assumption was that it's an English ale coming from England, but in fact the beer was probably brewed in Calcutta. So I didn't think what that beer would have tasted like, but it certainly explains why there might be a, a quite unique strain yeast of strain. yeast. Yep. So, yep. yes, I, I, I don't think I would like to taste the 220-year-old version of it, but I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting in the actual program as well, the very first bottle, they, they try to extract stuff that they thought it's just oil, castor oil is what they... Yeah, well, thought. obviously when it's been underwater for that long, the label's are long gone, so... <laughs> How do, you, how, how, how do you tell what was on there? Yeah, that's right, exactly. whether it was a p p label pasted on the glass bottle or not. And what was your take? So if you watch the program, towards the end you kind of get this, uh, this reveal that it's possibly not actually the world's oldest beer because there is a period of about 20 years from when it was mm. recovered from under the ocean um, to when they actually uh, created the beer. So the question is, is during that uh, that process, that was the and, the de and, the, and the decanting. I mean, so it's gone from the original vessel into another vessel. A scientist will say, you know, not a pure uh, environment. There was this yeast strain coming from the bottle it was decanted into, yeah. rather than from the original beer. So there are some questions about the whole yeah. thing. But as we were discussing, maybe they'll go back under the ocean and. Uh, find the original ones and do it properly. Yeah, and so part of part of this, I mean, uh, so I was contacted probably about a fortnight ago, um, and it was by Jonica Newby, who's the, who's the reporter um, in the actual program, and she wanted to kind of bounce around the story with me and make sure that some of the, the uh, things she was saying was kind of uh, sounding right and mm. going to resonate quite, quite well with the, uh, the beer community, and there weren't going to be too many questions about what they were doing. And at that time, she told me, you know, there's a possibility this is not the oldest beer. It's possibly the oldest beer, but there is that sort of 20-year 20, 20 time um, time period. But for me, um, being a craft beer enthusiast, it was, it was too good a story not yeah. to, you know, I definitely want to buy into it, but obviously part of me is like, well, until we can prove that it is, and there's that uh, um, that line of uh, forensic sort of evidence that it's yep. all, all, all true, um, there's a big part of me that does believe in it and does really want to believe it, but uh, part of me is a little bit sceptic. Um, but... We've got the beer. We've got the beer. So that's uh, the most uh, interesting thing. It's pretty exciting, but... And so, uh, we've learned today that unlike the uh, vision on the show last night where there was the garage door opening and the uh, tins of extract and they were sitting around drinking drinking that uh, beer made in that fashion, that this beer was actually made at the same or same similar time, slightly differently. Is that right, Jim? Yeah, so they did um, two batches... Uh, 
concurrently and um, the batch that we've actually got here and the batch that was tasted during the program and so forth uh, yesterday is actually one that was done on a grain father 25 litre um, brewing system. Uh, so Michael is a um, is an avid home brewer, yep. um, BJCP qualified, um, so he could talk far better than I can with regards to the sort of home brewing, the brewing equipment and so forth, but it was done all grain. So they used about five kilos of uh, cracked, cracked um, barley and barley, malt yeah. barley and yeah. then um, some crystal, some crystal malts. So about a couple of hundred grams of uh, of crystal malts, um, and then obviously to that they've uh, created a in traditional English pale ale recipe, um, and um, they added the yeast strains. So they extracted um, four different yeast strains. So they has three strains of Brett and um, one strain of Saccharomyces. The new Calcutta Saccharomyces. The new Calcutta Saccharomyces. <laughs> the other thing that we'll be adding as well is they have some East, Col East Kent Goldings hops in yep. there as well. So they actually have some proper hops in there. So <laughs> it could well be a very tasty beer. I'm actually quite looking forward to it. Well, I think the, the interesting thing is, or the point is, that they've kept their recipe simple. So hopefully when we're tasting it in a minute or two, we, we have got an opportunity to see whether there's something different there from a yeast point of view. So, yeah. Yeah. And tell us a bit more about the yeast strains, because that's probably something you know more about Saccharomyces and Britannomyces and how they're kind of the, the, the strains that were used back then. Well, I didn't even ask the question. I, I must admit whether we think this is an ale yeast. They've put an ale recipe together and they're thinking it dates back to when everyone was drinking, drinking ales. But essentially in the yeast world, you've got two um, sort of categories. There's ale yeast and there's uh, lager yeast. And um, that sort of dovetails into the question about, you know, is this the oldest beer? And uh, have the, our, our friends at Carlsberg uh, been able to dive into their uh, <laughs> library and uh, pull out something from around about the same time and say, we might have uh, something that's uh, even even older. And there's a brewery that, again, has been around pre-lager yeast, pre um, you know, Louis Pasteur and the refrigeration and that sort of stuff, but is now and for many many years been synonymous with uh, you know, mass-produced lager. So yeah, yeah there's uh, there's some interesting things in the world of beer when it comes to it comes to yeast. And so, so what Michael's tipping on there is just with regards to a story that you may or may not have seen. Um, and so uh, Carlsberg have actually gone into their archive cellars and they've got an 133-year-old uh, bottle of beer that is a Carlsberg beer. And Carlsberg is synonymous with kind of bringing or isolating the lager strain and have kind of been called the fathers of um, lagers in the world because yep. they're the, one of the first ones to kind of commercialize, isolate it and then commercialize the lager yeast strain mm -hmm. and um, they have gone back and gotten a bottle and brewed a beer from the yeast strain from 133 years ago. Which debunks that theory that you know no one's ever revived a yeast that's more than about 10 years old yeah. so yeah, if, if those guys can do it then there's proof it can be done and that adds, adds weight to this uh, beer that we're, we're going to try that they have uh, potentially uh, revived a yeast that's uh, a lot longer than 10 years old. Yeah, 220. <laughs> One of the things that we said on the show last night was that the, the family tree of this unique Saccharomyces is probably more similar to the Trappist yeasts mm, that we yeah. use in Belgium, so it'd be quite interesting to see what, what kind of nose that the, the beer has and, uh, you know, and then that flavour, that Brett influence. Has the Brett been there for long enough to really take over and really have much of an influence in the beer or is it just sitting there slowly doing its job? Do we know how long ago these were brewed? Uh, I don't know the specific date, so I'm thinking it's within say the last six, eight months or so. Yeah. Um, I do know that there's only about 40 bottles in the world. Right. <laughs> so we've got uh, five They won't be on the website, guys. Yeah, so unfortunately not. Yeah. Another um, untapped, <laughs> unique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, going back to what we were talking about a bit earlier on, yeah, so one of the uh, one of the things that they want to be able to do is obviously go back to the shipwreck, try and recover some more bottles, and then have no 20-year gap, but basically get it out of the water and then get it into a clean room and um, decant it and then go from there. And then ultimately, if they can, um, brew a beer that will be commercially available for, for anyone to kind of purchase um, using what might be the world's oldest yeast strain. Exclusive to beer cartel. Well, I don't, I don't <laughs> <think>. <laughs> Mate, possibly. <laughs> 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 I 
Yes, we, we have uh, we have offered our help with regards to uh, putting them in contact with different brewers if that's what they're wanting to do. But they have said that obviously uh, since the story aired last night and a news, lot of interest. yeah, they have had a lot of interest, which is great. You know, you're thinking of this is a small regional museum in Launceston, Tasmania, mm. um, that need funding and they do great things. And um, and David uh, there, who is the uh, conservator, uh, ex chemist then studied um, conservation. Mm -hmm. um, that's really his, his pro this is his project and he'd really love to see um, being able to get it commercially available so that he can then fund other things that they're doing at the, uh, at the museum. So, let's... Uh, You're going to open the board. We're getting frosty, so... Yes, so, <laughs> and I'm sure the people at home are wanting to know. So shall we start with just the, uh, the single strain, Saccharomyces? And uh, we've got a couple of light boxes here, which are just off the screen. Um, but you can see that it is a bit cloudy. Bit, bit of stuff down the bottom there. Yeah, a bit like a bit like a Cooper's. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. So it's uh, it'll be interesting to see. Let's see if there's a bit. Can we open it? So this is uh, three four one seven for the record. Oh yeah. Sounds yeah, good. Made the right noise. There's some nice bubbles coming up in the bottle there. It's not all the carbonated, it's actually looking like a pretty smart beer. It's quite good, doesn't it? So yeah, again, this is the all, this is the all grain. So that's not been done from the extract that you would have seen yesterday's program. And again, this particular one that we have, they've actually taken the bread out of it, so it's only the, the unique Saccharomyces yeast strain that are that they've used to ferment. They've isolated it, yeah. It's quite bubbly, isn't it? There's a bit of suspended matter in there, some yeast. It's so definitely bottle conditioned. Do you want to just hold that up maybe a bit closer to the camera, so? Yeah, how close do you want? I don't know. There's, uh, there's some good carbonation there, and um, yeah, as I swirl it around from left to right, I can see some suspended yeast. It's got a beautiful white head on it too. Which is what you want when you're uh, trying to focus on a yeast. And the, yeah, the lacing on the glass is pretty nice. Pretty neutral aroma, Willie. Not, uh, not getting that um, East Kent Goldings. Yeah, I'm not getting too much no. more off of that at all. But there's definitely a bit of, of yeast in there. Maybe even a little yeah. bit of sulphur. I'm, I'm not sure yeah. quite what the the water would be like, but it's uh, it certainly doesn't smell offensive. There's nothing. No, there. and I think if if I was given that. Um, either at a bar or if, if, if this was someone's home brew, I'd be very, very happy to. It's a nice beer. Yeah, it is a very nice beer. Yeah. And, um, and David kept telling me, you know, it's very, very clean. I'm uh, very keen to hear what you have to, to say about it, but I think that is a very, I think it's very well brewed. Yeah, and as we suspected with that simple recipe, there's uh, nothing sort of out of balance there. It's um, it's a well brewed, technically well brewed beer. It has got some yeast character, yeah, and I'm still kind of processing that. It's mm. um, it's well carbonated, but at the same time, it's got a sort of creamy mouthfeel. It, it's um, quite textural. You, yeah. you do notice in, in your mouth that, that kind of texture about like you know, mm. there's, a, there's some bubbles on the tongue, but it's like not totally dry. Kind of flavor. Yeah. Mm. You've got uh, it's quite distinctive kind of Belgian characteristics, isn't it? You find that kind of sort of yeah, I know. Where you, know where it, there's a little bit of banana coming through. There's there's more of that yeast, that banana and clove kind of thing going on than there is like any hop, any uh, mm. florals or uh, well, the Kent, or citrusy yeah. kind of flavours. The Kent Goldings are quite uh, low alpha acids. So alpha acids are obviously what give you sort of bitterness in beers, and so Kent Goldings I think are about. Four or five percent alpha acids, and and some of your sort of um, yeah. they're what's called a noble hop. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not these new age uh, citrusy. Um, yeah, 16 <laughs> ten, ten, twelve percent alpha, yeah, yeah, yeah. alpha acid monsters. Um, but I get what you're saying, Willie, really, about the the banana and clove. It's um, yeah, like it's come from from Europe as we suspected, mm. but it's not uh, it's not a German wheat beer kind of no, no. Uh, you know, banana and no. clove. I think. So I'm, get, yeah, I'm getting more sort of uh, Belgian, Belgian blonde, yeah, Belgian blonde, maybe mm. a little farmhousey characteristics to it. Yep. A little bit of lemon zest just to finish it off, so it's not a huge bitterness, but just a little yep. bit of a kick, a little twang. Pretty great some of you. Compliments to the brewer. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. well done. Yep. So I'm going to leave a little bit in my glass so I can do a side by side. Someone, someone, bring in Brett. <laughs> 
And so this is the uh, the next one we'll taste is the uh, the mix. So this has got the Saccharomyces and the couple of Brett strains um, or Brettanomyces uh, strains in it. Yep. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Carbonated again. Do you want to do the uh, the honors on that one? Sure. So it's certainly poured quite similarly. A little bit more golden in colour. Less cloudy as well. And, and definitely less cloudy, but of course that could just be the way we've handled it. So these were uh, shipped up to us overnight, um, about last week I think it was, um, and they've been cold stored. Um, you know, I didn't didn't treat them any differently uh, between the two, but um, yeah, you can definitely see that one's that one is definitely more golden. Um, that one's uh, like a straw, hazy yellow. Yep. Um, is how I describe the, uh, the yeah, Saccharomyces. The yeah. And yeah, you can definitely there that one there with the I don't know if you can catch it on the camera there, but um, that one there with uh, the mixed strains, mixed yeast strains, obviously clear, and you can also see quite a lot of carbonation in there. Yep. Um, but again, the, the lacing seems quite nice, quite head. And you can tell by sticking your nose in there that the labels are on correctly. <laughs> yeah, 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 most definitely. <laughs> yep. Straight away, you've got that kind of horsey kind yeah. of red uh, yep. character on it. Yep. Getting a little, little bit, bit of sugars and stuff as well. Uh, yep. Getting sweetness from the. Aromatics. Demerara kind of. It's the same base, you can tell that. It's a mm. well brewed beer. It's quite um, quite clean and, it, and it's an interesting experiment. Yeah. The, the yeast is the, the theoretically the only difference. Is, yeah. that, is that right? Yeah. So yep. the, the yep. same yep. base beer. It tastes that way. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'd say this one actually finishes, seems to finish cleaner than. Than the um, so there's a slightly different mouthfeel, you're right. Yeah, that creaminess isn't quite there. Yeah, yeah. Um, it even appears yeah. different. The head's dissipated in my glass, um, whereas there's still still more in the in the original one, which again you would expect from that um, that bread. Yeah, it um, doesn't have that caramel kind of feeling that mm. the, the first one had. So mm. yeah, it does have a, a little tartness, a little bit of dryness towards them. And I'd say even the hops are even less present in this one. Absolutely. There, there's there's um, more going on from the yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Was, so um, the, I mean Kent, yeah, as I was mentioning, Kent Goldings aren't sort of really dominant hops generally speaking. Um, if you use enough of them, they are. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Possibly <laughs> depends on quantities. Um, yeah. But for this style that they were they were brewing, I, I don't think it, obviously that was the the intention for it to be a really dominant characteristic of the actual beer. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think that in this beer, it's definitely. Um, subdued even more because of the mix of the yeasts and the yeast strains are coming out. Like Willie alluded to, I'd, I'd be interested to uh, taste this beer, you know, next year. I'll leave that for yeah. a while, see yeah. what the bread does to that yeah. later, because it's still got a yeah, sweetness in it, there's still yeah. like, you know, some residual mm -hmm. sugar sitting in there, yeah. so you know, that bread's going to sit there and just slowly consume it and dry it off and, and give it a real tart finish. So. I, I think that that's got the potential of being a really exciting beer. Mm. Yep. The first one, the the plain Saccharomyces, is a beer that I prefer to drink right now. Right now. So, mm. so. Yep. Well put. Yep. I'd, I'd agree with that. If only there were more than forty bottles in Australia, we could. Uh, that's that's one for you, I, David. Is to. Uh, I was about to say, yeah, we'll come and do this again <laughs> when, uh, when 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 it's had a little bit more time to uh, to take hold. How many bottles do these have? Just the two, so you've got one, one of each. He's, uh, he's had, uh, no, I won't say the Prime Minister asking for some, but there, there have been uh, political figureheads uh, wanting to sample the beer, um, and, and why not? You know, it's a great story. It's a, yeah, for us, it's a very special beer, and, and uh, thanks to David and the team for giving us the opportunity to, Thank you, David. Um, to, I guess, taste it, review it, and be part of, you know, it's only been a fortnight, but to be able to share the story and, and uh, try and promote it and get people behind it, um, I think it's been fantastic. Yep. And happy to report that it actually does taste good. Yeah. Cheesecake. Yep. They were telling the truth on the on the show last yeah. night. They sat around <laughs> yeah. on that on that deck and uh, said it tastes pretty good. Yeah, it tastes pretty good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Most definitely does. Yep. So that's. Do uh, you guys have any kind of last things to, to add? No, that's, 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 that's a that's a fantastic story. Um, it's been great to do that comparison. 
and uh, thanks for having us all. No, thank you very much uh, for coming along and uh, giving us your time and your thoughts on, on the beers. Again, a big shout out to David and the team down in Launceston at the museum for giving us the opportunity. Uh, thank you to you viewers for tuning in and uh, hearing what we have, have to say. If you do have a big wad of cash and you would like to get in contact with David, I'm sure he'd love to hear from people because they are needing to fund um, the expedition back out to the wreck to try and get some more samples of the bottles. And, 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 uh, and Queen Victoria Museum yeast might be the way to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We'd be quite excited to actually taste the real one. Mm. If, we, if we manage to salvage <laughs> enough bottles, yes. let's, let's get the real one up for Calcutta Brood. Calcutta Brew, so sure. Pre preservation ale. Yep. Do you know how strong it was? Alcohol? Uh, no, I will have asked David what the uh, the alcohol content. My guess is that it's a four and a half, five percent. I would have guessed less yeah. than yeah. five. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's yeah. certainly less than five. The original yeah. one I would have expected would be a bit more robust, probably a bit darker, yep. and probably like you know seven or eight percent. Yeah. It's impossible to tell yeah. so not, if not it, many if, calcutta beers i've had before <laughs> <laughs> if it is more than say five percent it's it's uh, very easy to hide it well um, yeah. it's very very well hidden so well. Um, so that's it from us yeah. um, tune in tomorrow i've got a uh, another little video that i'll do on the latest beers that we've got coming in 5 p.m uh, is the time that i'll shoot for that um, if you've got any comments or thoughts we'd love to hear them write them down in the comment boxes underneath the the video and again thanks for tuning in cheers Cheers. Cheers.